In this video today, we're going to talk about telemedicine and what is the nitty gritty details, how to understand it as a patient, how it can benefit you, and why it's easier than you think. Stay tuned. Cutting Edge Pain Relief, the channel that teaches you how to biohack your pain and get back to doing what you love. Telemedicine, it's something that's been mentioned for a number of years, but recently has been pushed towards patients as a discussion about how to be able to connect to their doctor. Many of my patients and patients in general have a whole host of concerns and worries about telemedicine and how it's gonna distance them from their doctor. And I'm here to tell you some of the benefits and how some of those concerns may not be as founded as what you might think. People think that telemedicine is a new endeavor, but it's not. Telemedicine has been out since the early 1950s, and it originally had a robust following in Nebraska in the early 1950s, where there was communication between doctors and patients that basically gave insight about health conditions. And throughout the time from 1950s to the present day, there have been various different advancements that have taken place. So when we talk about telemedicine as a whole, and you refer to the American Telemedicine Association, which is a great resource in order to be able to get some information, both for healthcare workers as well as for patients, it talks about three main different types of telemedicine that exist. The first is one that is a teleconsult, which in essence means that you talk in a synchronous fashion, meaning at the same time. It's a one-on-one -on -one kind of conversation, the same way as if you're on the phone, or the same way as if you had a FaceTime conversation, you could see that person, or you had a Skype conversation. You can see them, you're talking, you're interacting. The only thing that's different is that you're not actively at the same site, but basically you're having a conversation, the person hears you, and they're able to go back and forth. The second type is something that's called telemonitoring, which most people probably won't experience, at least initially, but there's some nuanced pieces that are really interesting and unique that are starting to develop where telemonitoring may be of interest. Telemonitoring has been um, an element where patients that needed vital sign monitoring had various different devices that were applied, and then remotely those things were determined. So initially, it was in the context of a patient that was in an ICU at perhaps a small hospital that didn't happen to have an ICU type doctor, an intensivist, a critical care physician. And what they did is they had a remote connection to that doctor over however many miles, and that doctor could actually perform as if they were in the room to be able to see what was that patient's heart rate, what was their respiratory rate, what's their oxygen saturation, and all those different type of things were vital signs that were being able to be assessed by the physician so that they can understand what's going on with that patient almost as if they were in the room, and then be able to, de to determine what the underlying problems, issues are, and how to be able to guide other healthcare providers as to how to treat the patient. And the third type is something that's called asynchronous or in more common language, something that's called STO and GO. So STO and GO is, has been mainly utilized in the context of radiology. So uh, it's a type of medical specialty that normally looks at imaging like MRIs or x-rays where an image is taken is then sent to another provider that will read it at a later point in time. They'll come through, pick it up, evaluate it, and then give an opinion back. In essence, what it is is so it's asynchronous, meaning it's not at the same time. Information is collected, is then presented to someone who is able to assess that information, give an interpretation, and then get back to the original person at a later point in time, i.e. asynchronous. So when we talk about this kind of combination or confluence of different telehealth services, as a patient, you're like, yeah, I think this is gonna be way too complicated for me to be able to handle this. And I couldn't tell you, it couldn't be further from the truth. So many patients are afraid that they won't know how to work with technology, that they can't do computers, they can't do tablets, they can't do smartphones. And the fact of the matter is, is not difficult, particularly when you have individuals who can walk you through it. Telemedicine and the value that it can definitely bring to both patients, healthcare systems, and providers, we know that it's not a perfect solution, but we do know that it can be able to help fill a gap, 
help people, keep them safe, provide care, and be able to give them a better experience at times than what we could from just a brick and mortar healthcare experience alone. So as we try to find ways to be able to make this easier for everyone involved, consider that there are benefits and it's not gonna be as difficult as what you might think. If this video provided value to you, please hit the subscribe button for more videos on how to be able to biohack your pain and be able to live a more fuller life. Please stay tuned to our channel and continue to follow us. Take care and have a great day.